Gentlemen and lady, I asked for some time to address you on the topic of faculty efforts at recruitment and retention, because all the efforts currently underway and at the planning stage have been completely undermined by the president's announcement that she's invoking Article 17 retrenchment, in other words, mass layoffs of faculty. Our efforts will be entirely useless if a retrenchment list is announced by this board in February. You might as well just rent a banner to drape across Colonel Glenn Highway saying we are failures. At times, it feels like we're living in an upside down world. We are not failures. And that this appears to be our new message is absolutely bewildering. Despite COVID, despite the most minimal of marketing budgets over the last couple of years, we have the best SB6 score in many years and over 12,000 students this fall. When our students saw the announcement of retrenchment, they started asking, what does that mean? And especially, what does that mean for me? So like all teachers, we sought to answer their questions. And when we did, our leader publicly declared us reprehensible, not with a signature. No real surprise that letter was anonymous though. That is the way this administration has been working. I'm on the committee for retrenchment. First, the provost listed the interim dean of the graduate school's job and then puts him on the committee. So he stands to lose at least $35,000 a year if he doesn't please his boss. Let me be clear, I am casting no aspersion on the professionalism of Dr. Milligan. He did not choose to have his job listed nor to serve on the committee. But it's just an example of what feels like a very shady background to this whole process. The process is based on dropping enrollment that is expected to persist. But we were told the enrollment plan for the, fu for, for the future is a secret. That's a quote. And I, I can send you or anyone watching, any student, anyone from the press, any supporting documentation you want for anything I claim today. The enrollment projections are for continuing drops, but the plan is a secret. Come on. What is the expected effect of increasing our marketing budget tenfold? of dipping into reserves to get that money. And the mathematical models they use to project persisting lower numbers, the Makov chain, that allows for no covariates, no inputs. It would earn undergraduates a feeling great. Using it just screams shady, shady, shady. I'm going to show you a slide here. Come up for you. There we go. Scott Williams, our professor of management, the man who trains the MBAs, one of our most successful programs, is on the committee for retrenchment too, and he's prepared for us all the research on the devastating effect on any organization, public or private, of mass layoffs. And that's one reason our chart looks the way it does. We have stabilized as a 16,000 student university or 14,000 FTEs. Our revenue was stable when Hopkins's overspending led to the terrible layoff of staff in the spring of 2017, which led to horrible press and the loss of our market share to places like the University of Cincinnati and Bowling Green. Surely we're not going to do this again. Now your names are on this chart and maybe this is your record. But we never know for sure who's responsible for these decisions, you or the administrators in University Hall. We know that recently, the illegally hired to avoid all equity and inclusion procedures, no matter what Dr. Edwards and Lerman just told us, the CEO, Greg Sample, makes the projections that have been so faulty in the budget. Yesterday, you heard how nonsensical his enrollment projection had been for this fall. So maybe it's their plan, not yours. But then again, we also know that President Edwards' contract says she might receive a 25% bonus, $125,000 on top of her almost half a million of her student tuition dollar salary if she meets the goals you set for her. Yet when we asked for the goals, what do you know? We are not allowed to see them. Does this sound familiar to everybody? Does it sound like we're back in 2015, finding out about the non-transparent workings? Come on, haven't we had enough? Shady, shady, shady. Wasn't the state, viol state ethics violation enough? The Ron Wine receipts on a scrap of paper? Now Dennis Anders has shown you what AUP tried to tell you for years. He's the king of shady. 
like Semple, hired illegally, and then drains millions of student tuition dollars away from tuition. Double Bowler, founded in 2014 on very dodgy enrollment projections, has of course drained even more millions of student tuition dollars, often borrowed by those students at interest, drained it away from their classrooms, their teaching and learning. We must stop listening to his projections. If this enormous error of retrenchment is not on you, you must immediately put an end to it. It will devastate. What we need is not retrenchment. We need a turnaround plan. Pick the Cleveland Browns. They didn't fire the offensive and defensive lines. They drafted a new quarterback, one the players had confidence in, had trust in. And now Baker Mayfield bringing Ohio to the playoffs. Dr. McElvain, I just wanted to let you know that we've reached five minutes. So, okay, Jared, I'm locked in. Yeah. So, you need to finish up real quick. I will. One minute. The trust we wanted to put in President Edwards was lost in May on that Friday afternoon at five o'clock, which he hit reply all, and that expensive attorney hit reply all back. Bring us a turnaround plan. We be the heroes, and we faculty will help. It's our future too, along with the students. This is a positive place, and we can generate endless positive stories like the one about Kevin. Every prof could tell you about their semester and how it went way better than they'd even dared hope. Every one of us could send you all the little notes we get, thanking us because we taught them something fascinating or were patient when they struggled. That's the magic. It happens between 12,000 students and their faculty. That's the good stuff. Not the stuff you want to cut. Not, not based on shady projections. Dr. In the Dr. Dr. of the season, let's make peace and talk about growth. And let's work to regain our market share. And I am happy to take any questions. 